We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. The time for us to look at our second conversation. After several weeks of hardship occasioned by the narrow scarcity, some semblance of sanity had returned as, uh, you know, the banking halls and ATM points uh, with those customers were able to access cash with less stress, some people say, while other customers who thronged to various banks and ATM points could not guess, uh, could not get cash as much as they had desired. Uh, but some people say it's more of an improvement to what we have experienced over time, you know, since December up until, uh, from December, January up until this moment. However, the Central Bank of Nigeria in an apparent move to avert the planned strike by the Nigerian Labour Congress NLC over the Naira scarcity had authored uh, the banks to open on Saturday, even on Sunday, to enable Nigerians access cash. The Apex Bank uh, has also thrown up its vault open for banks to have cash to circulate. But we'll, we'll just be speaking with Frank Elia, uh, who is a technology and media news editor at the Business Day right here in Lagos. Uh, Frank, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning uh, once again. Yeah, good morning. And it's always a pleasure to be on Yes, please. So I'd like to ask you, what lessons do you think that we can take from all of this? Uh, 2012, it wasn't really the first time we've had an introduction of this policy. You want to say reintroduction. At the time, we took a pause in 2015, just almost at the time we had the elections. And again, uh, we didn't really succeed with the whole cashless policy and all and what have you. But my question to you this morning now is, what lessons do you think we can derive from this event and experience? I think the lessons uh, for me will be that we need more uh, communication with the authorities. Um, over time, we have seen the Central Bank of Nigeria um, pushing cashless policy, which um, is very laudable. It's something that we should encourage. But then when you do it, you, there are processes that need to be followed. There are people that you need to carry along. Um, Nigerians are not people that are um, very difficult to deal with or, unless you decide you don't want to talk to them. And I also think that many people are not so receptive to change. Um, so if you're going to bring change to them, you have to be deliberate about it. You have to show them why they need it. Cash has remained king for um, over over many decades now. And even currently, we still have over 70% of, uh, uh, of, of transactions being done with cash. So it's not something you just wake up in the morning and say you want to remove cash from the system and uh, you want everybody to go cashless, you know, without adequate communication. People need to know how does this um, benefit me. It's always the um, what's in it for me factor that was lacking in this process. The CBN um, failed to take the people along. And in communicating with the president first, I would have also expected the CBN to go to the governors and also carry them along. Besides the governors, you now have the consumers who are the people these policies are going to affect. Because as we have clearly seen, um, it, the people that were affected most were not the politicians. It, were, it, it was not the government officials. It was clearly people at the middle um, levels and also the grassroots. So next time we're, we're trying stuff like this, it's, it's important. It would be nice to carry along um, the people. Well, when we had this policy introduced, although at the time we didn't have the redesign of the Naira note, uh, which is a new uh, development for 2022 or 2023, if you like to put, but how much more time can we have? 2012, we suspended it. We were going cashless. And now and again, uh, you know, we haven't been able to achieve that 100. So uh, what time do we still need? It's not really a question of uh, what time. Um, how much time can you take for us to bring cashless to bear? We would have done that from the beginning. First of all was the fact that the CBN 
uh, um, did not put in the infrastructure, the payment infrastructure that is needed for this process to become seamless. Um, we saw what happened during this uh, new node scarcity, that people who try to make uh, transactions, who try to use their USSD, who try to use uh, the POS agents, um, had um, many uh, um, failed transactions. Uh, those things are not just something um, uh, um, that just happens. It, it, there are factors that made those things happen. Um, NIVS is, was a great is a great idea, all right, and it has been working so far. But it needs more capacity. We are clearly seeing that there's more capacity for NIVS, all right. Uh, NIVS, sorry. Um, we, we need to expand the capacity of of NIVS. We also need to put in the necessary infrastructure. Network is very important, all right. Um, the the CBN and the telcos clearly need to work together to expand the um, um, broadband infrastructure that we have in the country. There are different places in this country that still don't have connectivity or sufficient um, broadband working for them. So when you try to make transactions from those places, it becomes a, a challenge. So if we had addressed those things from 2012, when this whole cashless policy started, Perhaps by now we'll be counting maybe 80% um, um, implementation. Um, we will not be at where we are currently. But we have failed to do that, and we're just pushing out policies without thinking what about uh, um, being deliberate about putting in the infrastructure that's needed for payment. Uh, I think with the time that we have now, the CBN now needs to go back to the drawing board and put in the foundation because the network is the foundation. Uh, and Frank, the payment infrastructure. Frank, yeah. I like to I like to intercept at this point when you say uh, the infrastructure. Yes, it's very important that we need to scale up infrastructure for digital banking, and uh, that should be done. But who are we saying? Uh, whose responsibility is it to scale up this infrastructure? Uh, should it be governments? Should it be the regulators? I mean, who exactly are we talking to at this point? So, so you have you have highlighted that there's need for us to you know have the necessary infrastructure. Uh, you say infrastructure yes. for digital banking, and I'm saying yes, as much that sounds very true, and uh, it's important that we scale up infrastructure for the banking sector or digital banking. Uh, but yes. whose responsibility should this be? Okay. So, it, whose responsibility should it be? It should be the responsibility of, first, the regulator, all right, who put in the environment that helps the investors to come and bring in the money to bring in the infrastructure. Take, for instance, um, we have, um, as at 2022, the number of bank branches that we have in this country um, got down to less than 5,000. All right? Now, if it has five, less than 5,000 bank branches, what you have is Lagos controls a, a major portion of that. Then you have Abuja, you have the cities that control. Then you get to other states which are presumed to be rural, right? Or have more rural communities. They have less banks servicing them. Then you say, okay, um, if we're not going to use the bank, less POS agents. Currently, there are about 2 million um, POS agents that we have, all right? And uh, of course, with terminals um, of that number as well. And then again, Lagos controls a large portion of that, of, of that um, POS agents and, and also terminals. Then you have Abuja, you have other cities, you know. So there is a low sidedness to the distribution of payment infrastructure that needs to be urgently addressed. Yes, the CPN has uh, um, released guidelines for uh, POS operations across the country and have also mandated that more price be given to rural areas. But the companies are not um, eagerly going there. Why? because insecurity okay so we've got the problem of insecurity and we have a problem of infrastructure the road networks are not adequate enough 
for people to govern. And where you even have road, road network in, in infrastructure, you probably also have broadband network not functioning efficiently. For instance, when um, Kandila and some other states in the north shut down telecom infrastructure, of course, what you expect is that um, all that is to be affected. Payment is affected, and all that financial services are also affected. You know, so it is a function of the government coming or taking a role seriously by making sure that security by making sure that the money that they are um, collecting as loans, they're using it adequately to provide the road network that we need. Then, when you do, and then you also address the issues of taxation. Multiple taxations is also encouraging businesses from going to the areas where they're supposed to go to. Instead, they would prefer to stay in Lagos, even if they are taxed multiple times, they can take the money that um, you use to pay the taxes. But if you put them in other states where they are taxed multiple times and the uh, and the people are not or the demand is not sufficient enough to meet up with that tax, they will not want to go there again. So those are things that need to be addressed. We need a uniform tax system. We need um, uh, uh, our infrastructure um, spread out across the state. More people need to be incentivized to become POS agents. Not POS agents in Lagos, but POS agents in these rural communities where the need is very high. Well, uh, Frank, we have to go now. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. We do appreciate your Thank time. You so much. And uh, we look forward to sharing more of it as we proceed. All right. Well, that's the size of our conversation this morning on at The Breakfast. And we ask that if you missed that on any part of it, it will be great for you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Have a great morning. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Good morning.